It is Friday, May 21st, and welcome to This Week in Linux News. All right, first off, I found out about a relatively new project this week, the GNOME Media Player. As it turns out, it's going to be included in the Ubuntu 10.10 .10 repositories, but Launchpad.net does have the source code available to download, so hopefully somebody will package it for other distributions as well. The cool thing about GNOME Media Player is it actually takes the backend engines from VLC, Zine, and GStreamer and puts it all into one interface with an automatic selector, so if it finds a media file that would be better played with VLC or with GStreamer or whatever, it will automatically select which one it would best be suited for. Up to this point, VLC plays pretty much everything, but on the off chance that there is something that will not play in VLC that might play in Zine or in GStreamer, this is a great way to get everything all in one place. In other big news, Linux Mint 9 released. Everybody expected this. Ubuntu 10.04 releases, Linux Mint releases a new version. Just happens. So what's new in it? They've got a new software manager, and it's not the Ubuntu Software Center. They have a new backup utility that allows you not only to backup and restore files, but also the package selections that you've made. They've made some improvements to the existing Mint menu, such as allowing you to edit the items in the menu and allowing you to make it transparent. They've completely rewritten the desktop settings manager. They outsourced all of the artwork for this so they'd have a much better look and feel. And of course they've made some other various changes so that they can differentiate themselves from Ubuntu. I am planning on doing a review on that this coming Wednesday, so look forward to that. In other news, I talked about VirtualBox 3.2's beta coming out a couple of weeks ago. Well, it finally released. Some of the coolest new features I've seen about it are multiple monitor support, so you can actually have multiple monitors in guest operating systems now. They've added the ability to hot plug in CPU, so if you've got one virtual machine that's taking a whole lot more resources than it needs, and you want to give it a little bit more, you can do that on the fly. They've added the ability to merge and delete snapshots while the virtual machines are actually running, something that was previously unavailable. And of course, they added support for Mac OS X. I'm I'm not sure if that's going to work on non-Apple hardware. It actually says in the release notes that it's only Apple hardware, but that could be a licensing thing instead. In some gaming news, Codeweavers has released their version 9 of crossover games for Mac and Linux. Some of the new features include the ability to install the new Steam UI, the ability to install and run StarCraft II's beta, and the ability for users to install games from a one-click compatibility center. While I'm not necessarily into games as much as I used to be, I could definitely see paying 40 bucks for a piece of software that would allow you to install and run games from a one-click GUI interface. And of course, the final news, the big breaking news of the week, Google had their I.O. conference this Wednesday and Thursday at Moscone Center in San Francisco. One of the biggest things they mentioned there is that they're open sourcing that VP8 codec just like I mentioned a couple of weeks ago. They've already released that functionality for their HTML5 player for YouTube. If you download a daily build of Chromium or Firefox, you should be able to start using that immediately. They've also created a whole new format that combines VP8 with the Vorbis audio codec, and they're calling it WebM. I'll put a link to that, of course, in the show notes. And VP8 is, of course, being released under a completely royalty-free license, so hopefully some more vendors will start adopting this, and HTML5 will soon become a standard. That said, Flash is actually going to be working with it too, so who knows what's going to happen. Well, that's all the news I've got for you today. If you haven't seen them already, check out my Arch Linux review from Wednesday and my intro to Caden Live from Monday. I'll put links at the end. As always, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Hey guys, I was editing this video and I just noticed that I hit 1500 subscribers. This is a huge deal to me and I want to thank you all very much for watching and subscribing. Make sure to check out my other videos from this week if you haven't already, and I will see you on Monday.